Oh, right. I, 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 I wish I wish I had on camera what just happened. I can see it. You can see it with the naked eye. Yep. Hello. Can you remember what the last time is that I did a vlog? I can't. Look who's here. G'day, mate. We elbowing? Boom. Third time's the charm. I've never vlogged on the S1 and I'm having issues with the, the sound and the focus, so hopefully this looks good. Anyways, I set up a little time lapse as I was waiting for the guys. I was a bit early and the clouds looked so static or like they moved very slowly. And then I was so surprised when I played back the clip because it wasn't at all what I was expecting. I was expecting clouds to be moving overhead slowly, but here's what it looked like instead. Yeah, I know. Pretty cool. Anyways, I'm here with Joe. We just did this whole intro, so it feels weird. Joe's a London-based travel photographer, blah, blah, blah. Wait, We've let, been... me, let me check my line. What did I say again? <laughs> a very famous nice. London YouTuber that talks about travel and cameras and cool stuff. And we're here also with Pete Jobson. Hello. Hey, hey Joe's uh, fan club. Two lines of less real quick. What do you do? Uh, I take photographs of street in London. Nice. So new to shooting with this camera, so it's just so much slower to operate than my beloved Canon systems. <laughs> that I'm literally, it's like an extension of my brain, arm, hands, whatever, eyes. With this camera, if you you know haven't been out running and gunning with it, it's so hard to um, to just get in the creative flow because you're constantly thinking about how you're doing things as opposed to so you can't think about what you're doing. It's very annoying, but we'll get there. So um, I don't know if you heard this, but it's been a while since I vlogged, so I forgot to put some things in there, but two things I wanted to share. Firstly, this video is sponsored by Licked. Uh, Licked is a music website where you can license commercial music by big artists and labels that you know and love. I'm an ambassador for them. All the music that you've heard so far, all the music that's featured in this video that you're watching currently comes from the Licked website. You can get your first track for free and your second for half off, which is great. And I think we should all get on board as creators because they're trying to change the industry. They're trying to change the music and online video industry where we are able to license this music. It hasn't been possible before today to do that in an easy way. So I hope you all support the sponsor of this video and check out the link below and check out the mission. Now, secondly, Comet Neowise, the whole goal of this mission, the whole goal of us hanging out and shooting was to see if we could capture this comet 
that is a once in a lifetime opportunity from London, one of the biggest cities in the world with an insane amount of light pollution, you know, astrophotography and light pollution, they don't mix up well at all. And I had no idea if this was possible, but very, very, very excited to try. And well, you're going to have to keep watching to see what happened, but I'm very excited to share with you what we ended up seeing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Hello, so I stopped vlogging for a bit. It's now night time. We've had a beer. We've bought some more beers. Joe's sadly left us to go home. And it's about time that the comet uh, is arriving. So hopefully there's not too much light pollution. We're just by the Tate now. Walking on South Bank. Tate Modern. And yeah, we're going to try and find a spot that lines up the comet with the uh, city. Or maybe St. Paul's that I just spot right now. Ooh, oh no, that's a bird. <laughs> you see that? Yeah. So it was like a comet and then it went in front, or a, a meteor, and it went in front of the cathedral, so that didn't really make much sense. So this is also on my phone, by the way. I should have told you I'm on my phone now. It's not bad for low light. Like, it's pretty much completely dark out, and I'm actually very impressed with that image quality. That's so, really let's go and find this comet. I wanted to line it up with that over there, but maybe we can line it up over here. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just doing some quick test shots. I Like this is pretty much almost exactly north and the comet's just a bit there. It's still a bit early, but I just shot a test shot. That line, that's a bird lit up by lights from St. Paul's. And there's a star here that we, oh, two stars actually, that we can use as, as reference points. So uh, let's start uh, figuring out where we gotta be and where we gotta point. Right, I've booted up Stellarium, the app, which, oh, Saturn and Jupiter in the south, which is, yeah, behind us, so that's not helpful. And also this timing is off, so we gotta, okay, so I've heard Capella is the star we use as a reference point, and Neowise is behind that virtual tree. So, yeah, got a point straight north, and then it's just a bit to the left, so it, it would be around St. Paul's. I think, I hope. <laughs> As you saw on that lineup on the that Astro app, it's still quite low, but I think hopefully if it's not too hazy, we might be able to see something very soon. Didn't really expect to get anything, so even if it's just a hint of it next to St. Paul's, that iconic cathedral over there, I'd still be pretty dang happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of my top time-lapse tips is always don't get a junk tripod like that. Get a decent one because this is gonna give you so much pain. Oh my God, I almost got run over by that guy. So what we're doing now, the shooting test shots, so let's try and find... That's Capella, I'm sure. And again, you know, according to that little app, we could have it somewhere over there. I think it's very bright though when you see those clouds and stuff. We'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna keep trying. I'll show you guys some photos or maybe a time lapse. I, I wish I, I wish I had on camera what just happened because I'm setting up a time lapse to show you like the b-roll whatever I can see it. You can see it with the naked eye. Yep Jump. Anyways, I just caught Jump. it in the like setting up the test shot on the 6D So there we go. That's a comet mission there accomplished on my camera. from oh, That's so good from central camera. London Not yet. I just saw so as I was zooming in on here. I saw something there and voila Nailed it. All right, that's cool. So was it in my other shot as well there then? There you go, you can see it here. Oh, it has been in my, it was in my shot. Hold on. Just more to the side, just to the side, and now it's moving. Oh, that's so great. Look, it's just on the edge. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm so content. Let's see what the S1 has. 
God, it's so clear. Where is it? It's just right there. And then the 6D, which has more pixels, so it's better suited for this. Let's do another shot. One second, F2.8, ISO 160, just as a test. And then, where'd he go? Oh, there she is. Wow. Love it. Okay, so finally set up a time lapse, which took forever because I couldn't decide on my framing. I couldn't decide if we had to stay here. I couldn't decide which lens and which camera to use. I couldn't decide which tripod. When stuff happens like this, you think you're prepared. And I made a list of which gear I want and I prioritized which type of content I want. I was like, number one thing I want to work away with is a good photo. Secondly, possibly a vlog capturing it all. Even just that good photo, I'm just like all over the place. It's like that time I was in Vanuatu on that volcano and you're like, you think you know what you want and then you spend two hours or less and time flies by and you just like, yeah, you cooked it. Anyways, now I finally set up a time lapse. I'm gonna focus on stills and possibly changing composition, but we've got clouds moving in, which is covering the comet, so that's not ideal. But at least we've seen, we've seen it, which is an absolute highlight for me. Um, you know, you can't forget that. It's just really fun to see that, so. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm content, but I'm nervous at the same time. And I feel like everyone that's trying to shoot these kinds of things knows what that feels like. So we're going to keep on shooting. There's another guy there. I'm not sure if he's just shooting the cathedral or the comet. Uh, and Pete's struggling with a, with a big lens on a small tripod. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're going to keep shooting. And it's just crazy. You can see it with the naked eye. It's so cool. Anyways, let me hopefully show you some photos and some time lapses now. And that's about it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed that comet footage. So it is indeed possible to spot a comet in the middle of one of the biggest cities in the world with the most light pollution. It's uh, quite spectacular. I can't imagine what it looks like in like a dark sky reserve. I'll link some videos down below that I think you should check out. If you want to see more of this comet, I'm excited about Martin Heck's coverage. He's been out shooting it uh, pretty much non-stop, I think, with some, you know, long lenses and, and astro mounts and stuff. Alan Wallace has some great content about it as well if you want to go shoot it for yourself. And yeah, I just want to thank you for watching to the end. If you want to see more vlogs, let me know, as I mentioned at the start, about 70 times. I haven't vlogged in a minute, but I enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, let me know. I was definitely inspired to edit this in a certain way and to treat it in a certain way after watching Joe's video. So Joe that you saw in the video, he vlogged the same day. He didn't do the comet, but he's got a very chilled vlog about that day. He was shooting on the S1H and he was trying out the Hasselblad X1 whatever camera. I don't know, Hasselblad's. But yeah, I'm very impressed with Joe's footage of that day. Very fun to watch. Now, just at the end here, I would love it if you could do me a favor and if you could check out Licked via the link below. You actually directly help me by just clicking on that link. They have been the main sponsor of this channel, pretty much. I have been a very proud ambassador for them. I've spoken about them a bunch of times. We recently did that time-lapse editing competition thanks to Licked as well. So yeah, I, I would appreciate it if you click that link and check it out if you ever want to license commercial music for any of your videos uh, on any social channels they're the way to go pretty much no one else is doing what they're doing and i really want to see them succeed so you can help out by clicking that link that's pretty much it thank you so much for tuning in hope you had a good time i hope you're liking the new setup i just uh, i'm about to post a blooper reel on patreon of me setting up all these lights because uh, I've been playing with it for hours now and I've got this huge setup and I've been getting some help from friends as well. Thank you mainly Charles uh, for your input on that. And yeah, I'm excited. As I mentioned in a previous video, Amelia is back at work in my what's in my time-lapse bag video. Amelia's back at work so I've got all this space now and I can do all these things. 
so much space for activities, or room for activities. I don't know what the quote is. Anyways, bit of a huge Belgian waffle here at the end. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye.